Hey, hey everybody, Brian Martin, the boss man here, coming back at you with our top shop tech, Michael Forrest. Once again, a new episode on the ranch hand. For today's project, we're gonna do the cab cow sleeper panels, and we're gonna do something different. Most of your cabin sleeper panels are three and a half, four inches. Some people even doing five and seven inches. Mm -hmm. But today we're going the other way, aren't we, Michael? That's right, we're going, going retro, keeping in theme with the truck. These are a two and a half inch wide panel. Obviously full wrap on the sleeper. And I said, Brian the here is going to stop at the cow panel with a separate painted cow panel. So that'll be really keeping in theme with the, the vintage of the truck that we're going yeah. for here. And not only are we going to go with the skinny two and a half inch, we're not loading these things up with lights. Just clean, yep. smooth, stainless. We probably will put a glass cab light down here on the bottom of the wide cow. This kit is uh, something we get from our friends up at 12 gauge in Canada. Something a little bit different than what we've been doing the last decade or so. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's really going to be a unique, like clean, crisp look and really finish out this bottom of the truck real nicely. And then what do you think about this masterpiece that Peterbilt uh, put on at the factory here? Well, it's great for 2023, but of course that's <laughs> not what we're going for. So we'll probably change that with something uh, keeping in theme with the uh, cab yeah. lights. and the Let's right say there. we're going to make an upgrade here on the turn signal. And and we're going to throw a, a glass cab light down here in the wide cow panel so can't wait to see the finished product i guess that being said it's time yep we better get at it <laughs> all right guys so i'm going to start with the cow panel so that's going to kind of dictate where everything sits front to back as brian mentioned this is extra wide you see it's about twice as wide as this original one and you also notice that we got this engine heater right here behind this cow panel that'll be covered up and put it here. So I'm just gonna attach it to this air tank bracket back here. It'll be out of sight, but still accessible. Also, I can see that this airline on the dryer is kind of swinging out a little bit and it's gonna interfere with where my panel sits. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the hood open, take this cow panel off. Now this block heater plug right here, it's just got two self-threading bolts that run up into the bottom of this cap structure. And I can attach it to that bracket right there. It still opens and we still have access to it. So all I gotta do is drill a couple of holes in this aluminum air tank bracket. And I'll just put the same self-threading screws right back in there. And then we'll have this out of the way. All right, so this is the airline and fitting that I need to get turned in closer towards this filter housing. But I can see that there's a quarter inch airline coming here, probably up to the governor that may not allow this to turn any further. So I'm gonna try taking this line off of this fitting and see if this fitting will turn first. I think it might interfere with that. Yeah, I don't think that this is gonna be able to turn and let this nut on the airline clear that fitting. So I'll screw it out and put an adapter in here that'll raise this fitting up so that this airline is further below it. Now, now we got uh, maybe an inch and a half or so clearance behind where this cow panel will be and this airline. All right, so I got our airline moved. I wanna go ahead and just kind of hold this panel in place to make sure that I got all the clearance I need and around that uh, block heater and the air dryer. Yeah, I've got a couple inches behind that airline. It won't be easy to reach, but I can still get to that block heater plug if you needed it. Now this panel has got four holes up in top where the uh, I'll put self-threaded screws into this part of the cab structure. And then I'll put a new bracket here on the bottom to attach back this hood guide. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of hold this up here with my leg. Typically kind of flush up the front of the panel with the front of the cab or the cowl here. But I can see that I've got probably less than a quarter of an inch of clearance between this toolbox catch and that panel. Now the hood on this sits right about here at the front part of this rubber. So I know I've got close to three quarters to an inch of clearance here if I'd flush the front up. I'm just gonna fit this cowl panel forward about three eighths of an inch or so forward of the front line of the cowl. That way when the cab of sleeper is moving on the airbag, you know, as it's bouncing down the road, this cow panel, which is actually moving front to back at this point, doesn't get into this handle. So I'll just get my black marker and I'll uh, trace out a couple of holes first and get them mounted before I draw the rest of them. I wanna have the top edge of this 45 degree bevel pretty much meeting the vertical part of the cowl here. All right, so I've got my front hole marked. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my 730 seconds and just drill my pilot right in the center of that slot that I drew. I'm gonna use one of these self-threading screws, put some threads in here. Now that one's threaded. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this one back into that panel. And I may even close the hood and just check what this gap looks like. I need to come forward or back a little bit in that slot. Yeah, I could probably even come forward just a little more if I wanted to, but I don't think that I will. It'll start and kind of see that the gap from the front of the cab edge to the hood is about an inch wide. And I've only got about five eighths or so here, which is still plenty of room. But if I move that further forward, it'll just make this a lot more obvious that the, the change in the gap size. I know the hood clears it. 
I know our profile is cut about right. Toolbox latch, I can get my whole finger width in there. So let me go ahead and open the hood back up and I'll draw out remaining three through holes. All right, so here's my second hole. Once again, I'm gonna put that right in the center of that slot. And I'm going ahead and tapping these holes with the screws that we'll use because it's a lot easier to do that part without the panel on here. So I'm gonna use my impact to run these bolts in. They don't have to be torqued super tight. I don't wanna break a screw off in here, so I'm just gonna run them in until they get it pulled tight. There, that's good and solid. Got my bit about where it was on the front of this cab panel. All right, now let me go ahead and get the lower bracket attached. All right, guys, so here I've got our factory cowl panel and the lower bracket, and this is the opposite cowl panel that we're gonna be putting on. Uh, I told you I was gonna be changing the lower bracket, this piece right here. As you can see, this one is solid. There's no moving parts, nothing flexing in here. And that's because on this factory setup, the top mounts onto the cab bracket and the lower part onto the hood guide. However, these panels that we have, and for that fact, most other cowl panels that'll attach to the bottom of the cab. Well, the cab's moving on your air ride, or even if it had just a bushing on the rear, it's, it still has a certain amount of give and flex and everything to it. If we were to put this solid mount on the bottom of here, we would not have movement where it needs to be because this panel is actually moving front to back on the truck as the cab bounce around or flexing or, or shifting, you know, in, in whatever case it is. So what we've got here is a part that we make here at Force 8 Trucks. This is a stainless steel sliding cab cowl panel bracket. This is going to attach to the bottom of the cowl panel, just like the factory one, and attach up here to the top. The difference is, this is going to allow this panel to move, but still keep it in line with the hood. This will keep parts from breaking. If we had a solid mount here, and this cab was attached to the bottom of the cab, and this flex, we'd break this bracket, we might break this panel, we might break ears off of here. Something was going to give. This here bracket is going to take that out of the equation, so this cowl panel can move freely with the cab while being secured and supported at the bottom of the hood guide like it was before before. We have movement where we need to and it keeps it in line like it needs to be. All right, so I've got the cowl panel attached to the bottom of the cab. My gap is pretty good front to back following this edge here, but when I'm mounting that lower cab cowl sliding bracket, I want to have the cowl panel parallel to the side of the hood. I don't want to have the side of the hood here and have this cowl tucked in or, or weaned way out. So what I've done, I've got the lower mount attached in there, but it's not drilled to the panel yet. But I want to compare this line to this line, try to keep these parallel, if not dead in line with each, with each other. About, it's about offset about the thickness of my fingers. And uh, it's pretty consistent from top to bottom. I'll go ahead and open the hood back up and I'll, uh, I'll probably clamp this bottom bracket to it and drill the two holes in the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the cowl panel. All right, so here we've got our lower cowl bracket attached. It's that sliding version that we make here at Four State Trucks. As you can see, I'm gonna rock the sleeper. You can see how the cab panel and lower bracket move independently of each other. That bracket allows the panel to slide and still be firmly attached. So now we got our cow panels on both sides. I'm gonna move on to the stainless cab panel. It'll start just behind this cow panel, come along here and actually wrap underneath this rear corner. So it'll follow this contour of the cab all the way around. All right, so here we got our passenger side cab panel. Like I said, it's gonna start here at this point. There's obviously be a gap in here. We've got one, two, three mounting holes to go into the bottom of the cab structure. And then a, a couple of holes here on this tab on the rear. Something to note is this raised tab needs to go on the underside of the cab, not wrapped around it like this, because then our, our lines get way off and our offset from our cab to our panels is off. It'll set in underneath like this. Now when you look at this from a distance, you'll have the same height all the way around here. So what I'm gonna do is connect the cowl panels and get this into position and leave about a finger's width. I could put a tape measure on it if I wanted to and get exact, but I could use my fingers for a gauge pretty well. You see we got a nice little contoured cut here, so it kind of starts following the contour of the cowl panel. It's a really nice touch they have there. Go ahead and get that set about where it needs to be. I'll mark one hole. Then I'll drill that and run a self-threading screw there like I did with the cowl panels. All right. So there we've got that one self-tapping screw in there holding this in place. I just want to go ahead and get this in position the rest of the way. Slot the holes on top again for adjustments. So I want to go ahead and just check my gap one more time. I got just enough room for my finger to fit in there. And also want to make sure that the sleeper panel is directly flush with the face of this 
panel here. You can see I could have this thing pulled in and it would step off or move too far out and have a, an edge shown. I don't want to have that. I want to have it pulled out here to where it's a flat line all the way down. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my next holes here. So I'm go ahead and drill these two. I'm going to self tappers in those holes. All right, so now I'm going to mount this one last time. It'll be the final time. I'll actually drill these holes after this is mounted. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the protective PVC coating off of the stainless steel. All right. All right, so the three main ones, I've got my self tapping screws into them. I've got two of them left to do here on the rear. And the reason I didn't mark those and pre-drill those is depending on exactly where this sits, it may change how high or far over anything in the hole is on there. I definitely don't want to see my bolt kind of blown out through the bottom of this hole or see this end piece running downhill. So what I'm going to do is just check the height of my panel. I believe I've got exactly two and a half inch tall panel. And if this piece is wrapped around and turning downhill, this will be more than that distance here. Yeah, see I've got two and three quarters clear out here, which means I need to raise this up. Obviously it wants to keep coming down, so I'm gonna tape myself a pair of large vice grips, put some protective tape on the end, pull this up in place where it needs to be, make sure that this is pulled all the way into the corner as well as possible, and one at a time drill these holes from my stainless part on the inside out to the body part. Now, got that one in. And the reason I didn't drill both of them from the start is if there was a little bit of space between this panel and this skin of the cab, when I tightened it up, it would pull that panel to it. And if there was already a hole there, my holes would not be aligned. So I put one in, tighten it up, and we go ahead and take my clamp off to let any slack pull out of it. Tighten it back up. I'll check my height one more time. Yeah, I'm good. And now I'm gonna drill the back one. Like I said, I don't wanna do both of them at the same time because one way or another, I would have a hole not lining up. Now there's that. All right, now our cap panel is completely installed. See, we've got a nice, well, about a 5 8 inch gap here. And our height of this panel stays the same all the way around here, but that's what we want. Let's move on to the other side now. I'm gonna go ahead and move back here to the sleeper panel. It's gonna start about a foot around this corner, all the way around, all the way up here. And it's even gonna come in and fill in this cutout section between the airbag and the bottom edges of the sleeper structure here. All right, so here's my sleeper panel. Here's the front edge. As I told you, it comes about a foot forward. There's no flange on this. I'm not gonna be able to put any screws up on top, but it does have the flange all the way, everywhere it mounts is gonna be a flange, around the side and around to the back. Here's that stepped up section to fill out that cutout at the back of the sleeper. First thing I'll do is cover up these tanks with some styrofoam paper. I'm gonna go ahead and just hold this in place to get a look at everything. Make sure I've got clearance where I need clearance. No interference with anything. Obviously, I'm gonna kind of change the radius that are on the corners here. As you can see, it's a really large radius parts are kind of bulged out. I'm gonna put a piece of exhaust pipe and a vise and try bending this around it. It makes a nice form to do a, a radius piece of metal. Now, I'm gonna come back here to the rear and kind of get that filler butted up to this edge of that cutout. Cause that's probably gonna be the part that dictates where everything else falls. Another one over here. I'm trying to not put these where the bolt holes are so I don't have any interference with my drilling. Now, this is the point where I've kind of got to do a little bit of hand forming here to get this right. And this is what I don't want to see is looking at it from this point, you see the gap between these. So I'm just trying to maneuver, manipulate it by hand a little bit to get this radius just right, cover that up to match this and not show a gap in there. And that's pretty decent right there. It's ever so slightly under that, but if it was out flush with it, that gap would be a lot more obvious. So at this point, I'm gonna say that that's the better fit right there. I'm just gonna kind of follow this line all the way around and I can feel that 
yeah this is starting to set back inside of there so let me go ahead and move this back out yeah this, the way this they built these sleepers you can either follow this line or follow this line because it just overlaps i think i'm gonna maybe just find something kind of in the middle and i'm pretty flush with this all the way up you see i got this part is rolling around the corner way too soon so i'm gonna kind of push it back out take some of that bend out of it and try to put some bend back into it a little further down straighten it out there right about like that all right i think that's where it's going to set all right so this point i'm going to go ahead and take my marker and just going to mark all these holes so that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off and get all these holes drilled. I'm just gonna put one clamp holding that up. And start to get my end over here. Get all my screws started. And come put a couple of them in the front. All right, that's pretty good for that one. All right. I'm gonna go check the corners, check my radiuses. sure I've got room for this sleeper to move without hitting the fuel tank. You can see they got a little bit of a cutaway right up here. So they got about three inches of room, two and a half, three inches of room there. So I know I have plenty of room for the, have clearance for the tank. All right, let's move on to the other side now. Alright, so here we've got our sleeper panels on. Nice full wrap all the way up here. Fills in that extra wide cutout area by the airbag. Looks really sharp coming around all the way to the underside of the cab and then filling in nicely with the painted cowl panel. We talked about putting a light down here at the bottom, so I think we're gonna go ahead and close the hood and find a good spot to put a little uh, light down here at the bottom of this cowl panel. So here we got our amber glass lens light, just like what's on our cab lights. And uh, we're gonna put one of these down low on here somewhere so let me go ahead and i'm gonna put some tape on the bottom of here so i can start laying out holes and everything to mount this all right so i know i'm gonna be pretty low and for a watermelon type light like that i just like to come about three inches off of whatever edge i'm laying it out on so i'm gonna draw me a line across here at three inches from the bottom all right so i don't want to come way up at the front i may run probably right below where a breather panel would be pretty much in line with the front of this breather bracket and a hood strap ball parking right about there and that's decently centered between the fender and the box i think that's a good point right there i'm going to come off of a straight edge if i were to come off this front it's it's curved and it would actually kind of start moving forward or i might be a little bit cockeyed there so i'm going to come off the back of this panel since it's straight looks like i'm about 14 and three quarters I'm just gonna put that on there so I can come the same on the rear or on the opposite side. That's 14 and three quarter mark there. That'll be a center hole for these wires to pass through. And I'm gonna also need to have two more holes for these two bolts that actually mount the back plate to the panel. I'm about 48 millimeters. So I'm gonna come 24 millimeters on each side of my center line. I'll just drill these here to probably a 3 16 for those two mounting screws. Probably just do a half inch hole here. All I had to pass through there is two small wires. So no sense in making that hole a lot larger than it needs to be. So here I've got my light plate, got my ground wire that I'm gonna add to the back side and my machine screws I'm gonna mount this to the cowl panel with. All right, so I got a bezel here for two screws. There's also a rubber O-ring in there to provide a little bit of insulation between this metal ring and this glass lens. Of course, that fits over the glass lens and the foam gasket behind it. I need a little thread right into those two holes there. Now I gotta find my wire for this. I know there's one up here on this panel somewhere. Spare turn signal, okay. Put a spare turn signal and a spare marker down here. Nicely equipped. So I'm just gonna use the marker. Now well, that one's solid. All right, 
right, here we go. Clearance lights, ultra bright LED. Look at that beautiful starburst pattern on the hood and that cow panel there. That looks great. All right, next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and change these lights up here on the mirrors to a, a light that'll kind of match our cab lights and that light down on the bottom of the cowl panel. So let me go ahead and uh, start removing these lights from the truck. All right, guys, so I've got our original turn signal light off of the mirror here. You know, that's a pretty modern looking light. It works fine, but it's not in theme with what we're doing. So this is the single watermelon light that we're putting on the mirror. All right, so you can see we've got our wires. It's going to pass through this internal thread on this post, come up through the tube, and it's going to come out the small hole up here towards the top. This will let this light hang down uh, about six inches from the mirror. We'll have it out here screwed on there, pointing forward, and one bolt mounting it up into the top. And I'll actually need to solder some wires onto these to extend these through the mirror tube and attach those to the harness inside the cab. All right, so I need to access the end of this tube to be able to feed my wire through here. And to do that, I'm just gonna remove these four bolts to hold this lower mirror bracket on. All right, so this wire pulled through there pretty nice and freely, but it never hurts to uh, spray some WD-40 down inside this tube. There's uh, quite a bit of friction between the insulation on the wires and, and all these mirror heat wires. So if we were to spray some WD-40 down inside that tube, this wire will pull through nice and easily. And it's not gonna hurt any of the wires or in the tube or anything, if it, even if it runs out. All right, now my grommets back in, my new wires in. Now I just need to pull the gauge panel out to get to the other end of this grommet where it passes through the side of the cab. Yeah, so I was unable to reach the grommet and the tube where the wires pass through the side of the cowl through the top, which normally I can, but it seems like they've uh, changed this dash enough to kind of limit my access. So I ended up pulling the ignition switch and the headlight switch panel out and I was able to find that grommet with that tube that's attached to it about uh, you know about six or eight inches back here in the dash so and get my wires pulled out there's the wires that uh, did go to the light that was there and of course there's my two wires that I had attached to it to pull through now I just need to disconnect the ends that attach to the harness inside the dash all right so here's the lead that I cut off of the original turn signal on the mirror I'm gonna plug this right back into the same plug it was inside the dash. Just gonna connect that to my wire. And that's just a lead of wire that I've saved from a light that we happen to have cut the end off of. Same size of plug, it'll plug into that empty marker light socket. All right, so I've found my marker and turned into the wires. I've got those plugged in. This should be ready to test for a function now. Let me go ahead and do the clearance lights. Looks like that's lit. And there's our turn and hazard wire. Yeah, that's br flashing brighter like it should be. All right, let me go ahead and uh, get my wires all tucked back in here and tied up and start reassembling this dash. All right, so our driver's side is complete. Passenger side is much easier. I only got to take the glove box out on it. So let's go over here and take this side off and start replacing it. So we've got our lights all mounted. We've checked the function, everything works perfectly. They look great on here. But something we were thinking about, we might wanna turn these lights facing outward just for a little bit uh, different look than going straight forward. If we wanna do that, all we've gotta do is back off that jam nut. We'll turn our light uh, straight out. We can even go angled if we wanted to, but let's try running them straight out to the side. Now, tighten our jam nut back up. And now I've got a light pointing straight sideways. And that can be turned 360 degrees in any direction we wanted to go. But I think for now, we're gonna try it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the passenger side and make it match this one. All right, so there we've got it all installed now. We've got our mirror marker lights, turn signals on. It's got a marker light down here on this wide painted cab panel. That looks really great. Look at that star pattern on that panel. Finished up our full wrap stainless cab panels and sleeper panels wraps all the way back there to the airbag all right there's our latest on our ranch hand build man every install we've done on this truck is bringing it closer and closer to that 1980s look that we've been going for this is going to be a fantastic looking truck